Hello everyone. I hope you guys are doing well. Today I am going to talk about one of the most controversial topics in medicine like is how to study. I am going to try to give you an idea of like the kind of books which you need to use about the talk about the lectures and then ultimately talk about solving questions. So when you think of books there are only three kinds of books. One is reference, second is reading and third is review. So let's start with reference. Reference books are these this kind of books. Like you will not be able to go through them in a year. So you know the like names for medicine Harrison Davidson for gynecology let's say Williams and uh, Bailey and Love for surgery these are really difficult to complete in a year so for reading i am going to say let target for something which are 500 to 600 pages something like step up to medicine which is quite a good book for indian authors some of you might know about kd tripathi Th third thing is a review book a review book is going to be something which is 200 to 300 pages relatively easier to revise two or three days before your final exam why am am i telling you all this because if you use the reference book as your primary resource from day 1 then you are going to really suffer for the small exams in your college they are going to divide the whole syllabus into small parts let's say superior extremity thorax abdomen so only when you're studying about abdomen and you if you use a reference book let like, let's say like the main grays anatomy or something like that Uh, like a big book let's say bd chorasia you studied everything from that and uh, you did well but in the real exam when you need to study the whole human anatomy in and revise the thing in two days that is going to be really difficult to do that's why you need to fall back on a review book so in my case what i used to do is i started reading using this reading books or like something or 500 600 pages max and with like a lot of illustrations it can also go up to 1000 so for anatomy i used grays anatomy for students remember for students students one is full of illustrations so the total book is about uh, 1100 pages but like if you cut out the illustrations it's going to be hardly about 500 pages max so that was really easy to grasp to get an idea of like what i am studying but to even to revise that in 2 days just before my exam is not possible so in that case i will have to use a review book 200 300 pages max just like i told you or my own notes so in this case i used high yield for anatomy and that's about like what 300 pages max and relatively easier to revise don't use a reference book you are not supposed to know everything about everything when i am saying this and i know a lot of you are going to give me a tough time on the comment section but you are not supposed to study harrisons if you are a mediocre student let's say i am a mediocre student i got like five honors two gold medals but yeah you get the point if you are studying from harrisons then you won't be able to finish it number one even if you are lucky and you really put in a lot of hard work and you finished it it's going to be really difficult for you to recall what you read so try to refer to harrisons when you absolutely need it try to do your like primer or the initial read from this reading books and then take your separate notes or mark this in your review book let me give you a quick example of like how i studied medicine so in medicine i didn't use harrisons i only referred to harrisons when i absolutely needed it i studied from step up to medicine that's a fairly commonly used medicine book here in the united states it's about 600 pages it covers everything so it's more important to know the whole syllabus than to know something very good you need to be jack of all trades in medical school than to be like a, an expert in thoracic anatomy i i hope you understand the point that being said let me move into the next topic that is lectures so lectures are usually two kinds one is where you go to the lecture hall and you listen to the lecturer for an hour or like 45 minutes and the other thing is the which you usually fall back on so that's like online videos I would say always have something to fall back on. I had online videos for everything. If your professor allows it, try to ask him for the PowerPoint presentation and also during the class if he allows it, try to ask him if you can record his voice. So when you come back home and you revise, you have this particular gaps in your memories during that like whole one hour section, you can quickly go back through this audio lectures and like find out what's important. That being said always have some sort of an online video lecture to fall back on. I will try to link this down. I used a lot of online medded videos. So when I used this they only had uh, videos for like the clinical section. But right now they are also expanding into the basic section. The best thing about this is it is absolutely free. 
so you get to like only sign up using your Google account and you get like all these videos for free and you can also buy their notes and like try those out if I used to go and attend lectures I used to read on whatever is going to be taught that way I would make the most utilization of my time because it's really difficult for the professor to teach you something in an hour so if you already have a like a skeletal framework in your mind of what he is going to teach like quickly grasp what he is saying when others are like staring at the video presentation blankly that being said the most important thing which you need to do is to solve questions without solving questions you will never do good in an exam from my own personal experience I failed my first exam in med school and that was superior extremity like the arms and forearms in the anatomy so this was back in 2013 like two months after I joined medical school so I knew everything about everything and don't don't uh, I'm not saying that I didn't study I studied properly I studied from Gray's Anatomy for students like that's a big book but I knew too much I knew so much that I failed because I didn't pinpoint uh, the information for the question that was being asked I didn't prepare like that I thought they are going to test my knowledge no they are going to test my they tested my knowledge in this particular way and it is going to happen with you so when you are preparing for college exams try to find out what kind of questions are your professor asking you you are going to eventually pass your medical school or medical college but you will have to take some sort of an MCQ multiple choice question exam let's say if you want to come to the US or if you are from the US you will have to take USMLE in India if people uh, the my friends who uh, want to do their residency back in India they need to take something called NEET PG why I'm saying all this MCQs are really important so when you're preparing anatomy and you only prepared for like college exams in our college we used to get like big questions like a theory proper theory exam when we had like pen and paper and we have to write big answers like let's say describe the course of median nerve in, in the forearm write about the brachial plexus in full details MCQ exams are not going to ask you such a big question right they are going to pinpoint the information so if you are not pinpointing information while you're studying right now in med school you are going to have a really difficult time in the future try to get a small MCQ book and sh solve these questions as soon as possible like when you're studying this particular topic let's say DNA or RNA try to open that section in your book and try to solve these questions don't use reference book don't use Harrison's I know I'm going to get a lot of flack in the comment section for this only use it if you need really need to use it or if you're stu studying about a very particular uh, topic Try to use these reading books to uh, get most utilization of your time. Revise from review books before the exams. Uh, lectures, try to record your uh, professors if they allow it. Try to get the PowerPoints. Come back home, try to fall back on some sort of a video. I would say the most important is try to solve as many questions as possible. The more number of questions which you solve, the more you will eventually know about the subject. With that being said, this is the way which I did it. I know a lot of you will disagree with this. Some people study Harrison's from their third year. So they take two full year to study and master Harrison's. That is something if you are able to do, go ahead and do it. But I would say I'm a mediocre student. I had limited amount of time and I wanted to make the best utilization of that time. And I thought I won't be able to finish Harrison within this particular time frame. And uh, Harrison is not written for medical students to be honest it's written for like professors or attendings who are practicing internal medicine on a daily basis so that level of detail is not needed in med school try to understand this so if you guys are interested then uh, what i will try to do is i will try to make uh, smaller videos uh, specifically mentioning like what resources did i use to study all these subjects if you like this video just like say in the comment section i will try to make like smaller videos mentioning this uh, mentioning my resources. Thank you.